Welcome back to another Satoshi Club video where today I'm going to be talking to you about the Decentralized Physical Infrastructure or DPIN narrative in crypto. Now if you do enjoy the video I'm going to leave a bunch of resources for you in the description down below so you can go ahead and continue your journey learning in the crypto blockchain or web3 world. So without further ado let's get right into it. The key takeaways are DPIN is an acronym for Decentralized Physical Infrastructure Networks. DPINs use incentivization systems powered by crypto to build a reward based system. Uh, this stuff kind of exists in the centralized world but DPIN is moving it obviously into the decentralized world and bringing along with it a bunch of benefits of decentralization. The DPIN concept has a versatile scope and stretches through a handful of vital operational systems and also industries that I will touch upon at the end of this video. And we have projects such as IOTEX, Helium, HiveMapper and Natix Network making a significant or significant attempts in this area and DPIN is maturing into a notable sector in the crypto space. So what exactly is it, right? Well, it uses the power of community, uh, you know, to draw ahead and uh, connect these networks of uh, problem solvers that I will explain in a moment or two. But let's start with the example of Uber, right? Uber is a ride sharing service and it's a centralized way to use a digital platform to utilize the power of community. Now, centralized systems like this use fiat based rewards and uh, the perks are, you know, wider visibility. It learns more uh, community members, it lures more uh, providers, and also uh, the centralized party maintains control of the provider's resources as well, which also uh, applies to the users, right? So there's this delineated process uh, to become an Uber driver, there's a process to become, you know, uh, Uber car owner or whatever, there's a bunch of different things, but it's all decentralized, it's all centralized, but these blockchain-based projects are developing solutions and improvements to this already existing system, which is already pretty efficient, but it could be more efficient, right? So projects claim to offer providers a better way to get involved in public service provision and also claim to offer flexible and higher rewards for these services. So these are all known as DPIN and they could shake up the service-based sector in the future. So let's explain what exactly DPIN is. Understanding Decentralized Physical Infrastructure Networks A DPIN is a network of crowdsourced providers offering certain real-world services to users and leveraging a public ledger or blockchain to keep a record of the services rendered. For DPINs, the blockchain is an administrational remittance and record keeping facility. As an administrational facility, DPINs design a permissionless system for providers and users via the blockchain. DPINs are very versatile and their application spreads across different sectors ranging from crowdsourced geographical services to advanced infrastructural marketplaces operating completely on the blockchain. Now there's a few categories of DPINs that we need to have uh, classified, right? First and foremost, we have two broad categories, the physical resource networks or PRNs and the digital resource networks or DRNs. PRNs are location-based decentralized physical resource networks. Providers in their network contribute hardware resources related to connectivity, mobility, energy, and similar sectors to offer services. These resources are location-based and non-fungible in the sense that the services are localized or set to a place, right? They can't be changed. Now, DRNs, uh, on the other hand, are networks of fungible digital resource providers where providers contribute resources like computing power, shared bandwidth, or storage facilities. DPIN is stretching the boundaries and connecting blockchain and the real world in a way we have never seen before. And here's how it works, right? There are three major role players in the DPIN uh, connections, right? We have the physical facility, which is controlled by a provider. We have a middleware connecting the facility to the blockchain, and we have the public ledger that manages the connection for a remittance. So here's how this works in a little bit more detail. We have the physical infrastructure where the facility could be anything from a sensor, internet router, or solar panel, right? This is managed by a private provider. Imagine a proof of work blockchain network where miners contribute computing power to protect the network as you know, many of these private providers as possible can contribute their facility to a D pin. Middleware, so this, this basically handles the bulk of the connection between the blockchain and the physical infrastructure. So like a decentralized Oracle network or DON that picks up data from the outside world and communicates to a blockchain application. And lastly, we have a blockchain system where data gathered by the middleware are sent to the blockchain, which serves as an administrator and a remittance system for the providers and the users. Based on the data provided by the middleware, the blockchain ratios, uh, rations demand across uh, rations, basically demand across the providers and computes the rewards based on these activities, which are then sent in cryptocurrencies. So instead of fiat rewards that we may have in an Uber-like uh, application, we have 
uh, completely decentralized or cryptocurrency based rewards, right? This is how the flywheel works, right? We have the third party developers, the end users, the deep in protocol, our entrepreneurial culture, investors, miners, and the deep in platform. So we have token value, we have platform, we have deep in apps, deep in protocol, connecting the community, connecting capital, connecting production, and connecting humans into the whole story. This is a photo that I will probably start using on my desktop as a screensaver because it is so powerful and Deepin may actually be one of the largest innovations when it comes to cryptocurrency or blockchain usage in general in the future. Deepin's hope to grow a resource efficient physical infrastructure through incentivization and users are also attracted by cheaper service charges relative to corporation owned facilities. So it's a win-win for communities or users such as you and I. Now, what are the benefits of Deepin, right? First of all, horizontal scalability. Networks can increase resources instead of increasing the capacity of each resource, right? This is what horizontal means. Depending on the available uh, dormant resources and rationing system of Deepin, systems like this can scale infinitely. Community control and decentralization, obviously moving the control from corps to uh, corporations to a collective of individuals committing their resources to build a facility. Fair pricing, where the pricing model of a deep pin is expected to be cheaper than traditional centralized pricing models. And for a system powered by people, deep pins are also more likely to consider affordability in their pricing model than corporations. Cost efficiency, right? A provider can commit their facility to multiple networks and deep pins are designed to deliver the best possible service for the least possible cost, obviously, since they are community run. Permissionless, anyone can contribute their resources to a DPIN. On the other side, uh, on the user side, anyone can also obtain the services offered by a DPIN. So there's no barriers, right? And incentivization, so there's incentive for the providers in terms of a passive or active income. And individuals can also build an income stream from DPINs, right? What are the challenges? Well, we have adoption stage and impact on revenue. At the current stage, it's very new and only a small percentage of enthusiasts and facility owners are currently interested in being part of a DPIN. It's very difficult to understand uh, especially when you get into the tech. The cost of running private facilities is uh, quite high uh, at the start, especially since uh, you know the setup costs are really, really high and then you have a, a lack of users and usability at this moment right now. Now, I'm not saying that's not gonna change. I do believe that it is, but it is gonna take some time. And we have profitability. So for a deepen to actually attract providers, it must be able to remit rewards that are at least equal to the running cost while remaining profitable. Now, lastly, let's talk about a few sectors and a few deep in crypto projects that you can you know go ahead and check out once again resources in the description below you're going to find a lot of info there and let's move on we have wireless so deep in in the wireless sector is focused on developing decentralized connectivity sharing platforms for iot and cellular devices helium is a great example Geospatial, right? So these PRNs incentivize providers to offer physical locational services to get rewarded in crypto. HiveMapper is a very interesting crowdsourced map using efforts from its community where anybody can put in a dash cam and contribute to the system earning tokens. Mobility, so these projects are designing newer ways to manage vehicles, collaborate with other vehicle owners and companies, earning rewards while doing so. Uh, we have health, we have energy, the arc green uh, for health, we have health blocks. Make sure to Google all of these or check out the resources in the description. We have Filecoin, there's an interesting video that we talked about Filecoin. You probably check it out above me or on my left side or uh, in the recommended section of the video itself. Uh, compute networks, where we have NuNet, which is an AI powered marketplace for computing resources, uh, which once again is uh, you know, built to you know, connect users by pooling private computer resources uh, providers to commit these dormant resources to a certain network generally very interesting as well ai powered bandwidth networks such as theta or theta which is an evm compatible network that optimizes content delivery and makes it more efficient and finally deepens could be the next stage in the evolution of commercial level facilities software and hardware and this is why you should check out the description and learn a little bit more about deepen and its usability in this world so thanks for watching another video. Lastly, I'm not a financial advisor and anything you do invest in the crypto, blockchain or NFT world, uh, you should do your own due diligence beforehand. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Drop a like if you did. And I'll see you all in the next video. Subscribe to Satoshi Club.